Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I am Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series where we're trying to get you to finish in the top 5% globally. This will mean in your mini leagues at work or at school or with friend, you'll have a reasonable chance of finishing either near the top or actually at the top. So we look at how game week 30 went, the transfer suggestions for 31, captured choices for 31. It's a little bit more complex again, sorry, because we have doubles and blanks. But let's get into it. In case you're thinking the lighting looks a bit strange, that's because I'm recording this in the morning before work. It's currently half past seven. I was hoping to finish off this whole thing last night and then record it last night. But it was like, I don't know, half ten by the time I was ready. It takes hours to put these things together, which I'm not after sympathy. It's my own fault for producing this like this. I could have just done what lots of people do and just show you a web page. But then that just grates me a little bit. I'd rather put a little bit of effort into it. I hope you appreciate it even just a little bit. Anyway, the goalkeepers. For game week 30, you'd have had one of these six playing. De Gea, Rea, Ramsdale, Pope, Kepa, Maislio. Sorry, I was just throwing it a bit because I realised De Gea and Rea rhyme. And if you were going to write a little poem, you could do something about De Gea and Rea if you're into rhyming couplets. Anyway, they got 6, 0, 1, 11, 3, 0. So that was an average of three and a half for your keeper. It would have been nice to have five, so that wasn't very good. And this was a very low scoring week across the board generally. The first set of defenders, you'd have had two or three of Trent, Van Dijk, Trippier, Chilwell, James, Shaw, Gabriel, Zinchenko. And they scored five, zero, two, zero, two, didn't play, one, one for a really poor average of 3.9. You'd have had two or three of these defenders. Me, Estupian, Eguard, Botman, Pinnock, Castagne, Fafana, and they would have scored 1-1, one, one, didn't play, 1-1-2-2, one, one, two, two, which is very low compared to last week. That's an average of 2.9. Two or three midfielders, you'd have had two or three of Salah, Fernanda, Saka, Madison, Gakpo, Rashford, Odegaard, and they would have scored 5-3-1-2-2-6-2. Two, two, two. Another load of rubbish scores, an average of 7.5. Two or three of these midfielders. Martinelli, Gibbs White, McAllister, Matoma, March, Jensen, Somerville. And they would have scored 13, 2, 2, 2, 7, 2. Didn't play. Average of 11.7. You'd have had one or two of these forwards. Harland, Kane, Darwin, Tony, Felix. And they scored 12, 9, 1, 4, 2. Average of 7.2. One or two of these forwards, I mean, nearly there. Watkins, Isaac, Ings, and Bremo Johnson. And they scored 7, 5, 2, 1, and 2 for an average of 5.1. And your captains would have been one of Harland, Rashford, Watkins, Kane, Madison, Salah. So you'd have got extra points of 12, 6, 7, 9, 2, 5, which is an average of 6.8. So the global average across the whole game is 54 points, which is low. The minimum you'd have got following this system, by my calculations here, is 18 points, which is very low. And the average is 48.6. And I can't remember another week where, following this system, the average score would have been below the global average. It may have happened once before, I'm not sure. The best you could have got was maybe just over 100 points. And I did spot check teams, or spot check, I thoroughly check the teams that I'm aware of, of following this. And for the first time, there were slightly more red arrows than green arrows. But it was only like by a point or two either side. So nobody did really bad and nobody did really good. They're all around the same mark. And it basically came down to if you captained Harland, you probably got a green, but I found someone who didn't. If you captained Rashford, you were probably middle-ish, but you might have got red. But yeah, that was it was just a bad week. You'd expect bad weeks. Sometimes we have very good weeks and it all averages out. But the people I spot checked who've been following it from the start, they're all within the top 5%. So they are actually doing okay at the moment. 622 subscribers. Thank you very much indeed. Right, transfer talk. So this is about game week 32. We're in game week. We're about to start game week 31. 
but in game week 32 there are four teams blanking and we need to allow for these teams that are blanking so we're about to go into game week 31 this weekend the following game week is game week 32 and there are four teams who are not playing that game week because of the FA Cup semi-finals they are Brighton, Chelsea, Man City and Man United so ideally you don't have more than four players from these teams ignoring the goalkeepers because I'd hope you haven't got the United and the Chelsea keeper so ideally you'll only have four maximum players from these four teams after any transfers going into this weekend. If it turns out you have more, maybe five or six, don't fret about it. Do not break your team for it. There was an unfortunate incident I found out <laughs> last week. I suggested if you had more than, might have been five last week, or try and get it down to five, somebody who didn't even have to make a transfer because they didn't have too many, took a hit to remove Haaland from their team, which was very unfortunate because a lot of managers were taking hits to bring in Haaland and the idea of this system is you can pick any players and that's true and you should be all right and that's true but in previous parts before the last wild card I always had banker players which is everyone had these players and then you choose the other half of your team this last few weeks I've been more just pick any of these players and I think that was a mistake I think I should have included bankers so in the next few slides where I'm going to talk about if you want to do a transfer this is my preferred order going into this current game week. I've ordered them so that the first player on each slide is for that slide. That's how the order that I would choose the players. So, for example, looking at the goalkeepers, hopefully none of you need to make any keeper changes. But if you were, and I was bringing them in, this is my preferred order for this current week. Pope, De Gea, Ramsdale, Kepa, Raya, Meslier. Now, De Gea and Kepa blank in game week 32, but De Gea does have a double game week in 34. And then Pope has a future double game week, as does De Gea, as does Kepa. So taking all that into consideration, if I, supposing I had Raya and I just thought I'm bored of Raya and I had Mesli, I think I want to change one of them. I'd be inclined to go for Pope this week, but between Pope and De Gea, it's really, really close. And if you went for De Gea, that's fine. However, unless you need to make a goalkeeper transfer or the rest of your team's fine and you've got two free transfers, I would not recommend making a goalkeeper transfer this week. So we have two pages of defenders. You have to have five defenders in total. So I'm telling, saying you have two or three from the first page and two or three from the second. So on the first page, in my preferred order, if I was doing defender changes this week, Trippier... Trent, Shaw, Van Dyke, Gabriel, Zinchenko, James and Chilwell. So James and Chilwell are both brilliant players, but we don't know how Lampard's going to play. He's had two games so far and he's not won either of them. Is he going to be able to get Chelsea playing right? If we had a, if we, I don't care for Chelsea. If Chelsea had a really good manager playing optimally, optimally there we go it's too early for these long words then James and Chilwell would probably be brilliant and would be very near the top of this list but there's a little bit of uncertainty at the moment and all the players on this page should be good between now and the end of the season so if you're finding you've maybe got five or six players not playing in game week 32 and some of them are on this page here that are blanking then if you're making changes I'd make sure I've got Trippier if you can afford him. If you've already got Trippier, then I'd go for Trent. But if you can't afford him or you don't fancy him, which is fine, I'd then go for Van Dijk. I wouldn't go for Shaw because he's blanking next week unless I had no other issues. But I've still got Shaw there because when he's back from injury, which hopefully he'll be back by game week 33, he will hopefully be very good for the rest of the season. So to keep in mind, Shaw is blanking next game week as is James as is Chilwell and then Trip, uh, Trent has got a double in 34 as has Shaw as has Van Dyke, and Trip has got a future double game week as has Shaw so for example if Chilwell was in my team and I was short of players which is what actually happened to my team then I would sell Chilwell and buy Trippier if I didn't have him but I did already have him so I bought Trent because I could afford him. But if you can't afford Trent, then I'd say you'd swap Chilwell for Van Dyke or Gabriel Zinchenko. Any of those are fine. 
Another option you could have is if you have three on this page and you're say choose uh, selling Chilwell, you could just stay with two on this page and then get your third defender from the next page and then you'll be saving a little bit of money because page one and page two, page one to the slightly more expensive players. Oh, and James and Chilwell do have future double game weeks, but there is uncertainty regarding how Lampard is going to be playing. So for the cheaper defenders, we've got a new entry. That little star means a new entry. Doesn't mean he's a star player and the best thing since sliced bread. I just want to highlight he's new to the system. So I've put Canati on here because he seems to be first choice for Liverpool. He is only 4.8. He's not attacking like uh, maybe Trent or Robertson would be. But there should be some clean sheets between now and the end of the season. He does seem to go up for some of the maybe free kicks and corners. So he may get an attacking return. But for 4.8, if you have no other Liverpool players you're needing to get in, I think he's quite a nice cheap player. And I may get him myself, but I've not decided yet. Depends what I do with my team. And then a stupid end, Botman, Fafana, me, Pinnock, Aguard and Castagna. So this would be my preferred order going into game week 31 if I was making transfers on this cheaper page. Estupinen has a blank in game week 32, as does Fafana. Canate has a double in game week 34, as does Estupinen, as does Aguard. But Aguard's got two difficult-ish fixtures, away to Palace and I think away to Man City. But Estupinen does have a future double game week, as does Botman, as does Fafana. So there's lots of fun to be had on this page. So, for example, if you had Castagne, Liv Leicester... They lost their manager recently, Brendan Rodgers, and they're really playing, not like they don't care, they're just out of their league now in the Premier League. It's like they're playing like a championship side. So, for example, if I had no other transfers to make and I had Castagne, I'd be tempted to maybe move him on and swap him for perhaps Canate if I wasn't going to stop myself getting other Liverpool players I wanted. Otherwise, maybe Botman. You could get a Stupinen if... You want having too many players not playing in game week 32. Leicester seem to be struggling at the moment. I, For myself personally, they're my favourite, as in most likely, to be going down this season. They're just so, so not with it. It's such a shame. They have a lot of talent. They're just not playing well. Anyway, midfielders, the expensive midfielders. Salah, Fernandes, Grealish. He's a new entry. That's what the star is. Rashford, Saka, Gakpo, Odegaard. Madison and I've even put a red arrow by Madison so if you've got Madison and you have no other fires to put out I think it's worth selling Madison now and swapping him for perhaps Grealish that's a popular move or one of the other players in this page not Rashford because Rashford is currently injured we don't know when he's back Salah and Fernandez are very much more expensive these are ordered by who I'd be getting in if money wasn't an issue so I think Salah's the best on this page between now and the end of the season. But he's, I don't know how much he is, he's probably somewhere around the 12 million mark. Whereas Grealish is only 7.1 million. But Pep Roulette means that we never know which Man City players are going to go out. So Grealish has been doing really well recently. And he may be sitting on the bench for the next few games just because it's a random thing that happens. So a slight gamble choosing Grealish. But a lot of managers have brought him in which means if he does well and you don't have him, that could be costing you rank points. Anyway, keep in mind, Fernandes is blanking in game week 32, as is Grealish. So don't buy Grealish if you're then going to be short of players in game week 32, as does Rashford. Salah has a double in game week 34, as does Fernandes, as does Grealish, as does Rashford, as does Gakpo. Fernandes also has a future double game week somewhere, as does Grealish, as does Rashford. So these are all things to keep in mind. I think you should keep them in mind anyway when you're choosing your players. But you don't have to make any transfers. If your team looks all right and you've only got one free transfer, just don't bother making any. You don't need to make any. But if you've got Madison, I'd suggest you move him on. The midfield, the second page. These are the cheaper midfielders. March, Matoma, McAllister, Martinelli, Gibbs, White, Jensen, Somerville. The three Brighton boys all blank in 32. They all double in 34, but they all have a future double game week. They actually have two future double game weeks. So Brighton players are very good players to be getting 
because they got three games left, three games extra. However, we don't know if there's going to be rotation. There's a chance because some of these games are going to be like weekend, midweek, mid weekend, midweek. Some There might be more chance of getting a knock. There might be more chance they're going to get rested. But they don't have a massive squad like Man City do. So they have a better chance than Man City do of keep getting game time. For the forwards, the expensive forwards, the preferred order would be Haaland, Kane, Tony, Darwin, Jesus, who's a new entry, and Yao Felix. Felix is a brilliant player. He's completely not performing. So if you wanted to move him on, that's fine. So if I had Felix, I would be tempted to swap him for anyone else on this page. I'd probably go for Jesus, I think, but he doesn't give any double game weeks, so Darwin's good. If you haven't got Haaland and you're able to get Haaland, it's worth getting Haaland, but he is very expensive. But Haaland does blank in 32, so don't get in Haaland if it means you're going to be short for game week 32. Felix also blanks in 32. Haaland doubles in game week 34. Darwin doubles in game week 34. Haaland has a future double game week. And Yao Felix has a future double game week. We just don't know when it's going to be yet. And then the cheaper page of defenders, preferred order if you're making subs for this week. Watkins, Isaac, Ings, Johnson and Bremo. Ings doubles in game week 34, but it's away to Palace, away to Man City. Isaac's got a future double game week somewhere. Regarding the bench for this week, the goalkeeper, the first one of these goalkeepers that you see that you've got goes on your bench. That's Meslier, Rea, Kepa, De Gea, Pope, which means if you've got Ramsdale, Ramsdale is definitely playing for you. Regarding the bench order of your other three spaces, I'm going to show you 16 players now from this system. Some of them are good players. Some of these are going to be getting returns this week, or they should be. But there's nothing we can do because you actually have 15 players that are pretty much okay. So there will be certain benching headaches. So the first player you see that I show you that you have, you put in position three on your bench. The second one you have position two, the third one position one. But of course it needs to be legal. You can't put three defenders on your bench. So it would be two defenders and then another position. So you have, if you still have Castagna, he goes on your bench. Then Somerville, Aguard. A stupid and even though he's very good, we've just got good players in the system. Madison, Pinnock, Embremo, Jensen, Me, Botman, Fafana, Chilwell, Gabriel, Canate, Zinchenko, Gibbs White. If after all that you still haven't got three players on your bench, then put your cheapest player that you've still got who's playing away. On your bench and if you can't possibly be sure after that you're bound to be all right <laughs> regarding the captains i'm going to show you some captain choices now in my preferred order so the first one you have i'd suggest you put as captain the second one you have i'd suggest as vice captain but if you want to change this that's absolutely fine and when i'm doing the scoring next week i'll treat them all as even but if it was my team i would put the old mule hat on good old Haaland. There we go. He's just incredible at the moment. There's a remote chance he won't he won't start at the weekend or maybe get pulled off early if at half time Man City are beating Leicester 4 0 or something. But it does seem like he is actually playing every game. My next choice for this week would be Kane, so he would get the old mule hat. Then it would be Salah. And then the next three would be Fernandez. Tony Saka. So if you've got two of these, then one of these should be your captain, one should be your vice captain. If you've only got one or none, then just prioritise your next ones by your most expensive player who's playing at home. So if you have none on this page, just make your captain your most expensive home player and your vice your next most expensive home player. If you run out of home players and apply the same rule to your away players. So I'm sorry if that was a bit long again this week. Hopefully in a few weeks these videos will be shorter again and are much more simple. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a good double game week. And uh, now I've got to edit this before I start work. Thanks. Bye.